Uh, Bonnie, I noticed you also have a, the, a microscope here. Uh, what, how much work do you do with this? Uh, not a lot, but every once in a while I get a project that is, you know, it, I really can't see without looking at it over here. There's something very tiny. And then I might spend days and days with lots of breaks <laughs> because it, it, you're it's fatiguing, your eyes right. get tired. So, but this is a great microscope. And I've had this ever since I came here. It's made in Switzerland. It's, you know, really works nice. And um, it has what we call a camera lucida attachment. So that when I have a specimen on the stage here and I'm looking through the eyepieces, um, there's, there's a mirror here and it reflects down the image onto a piece of paper that I usually have taped right there. Mm -hmm. And so while I'm looking at the image, I can very carefully be drawing the outline of it. It's pretty tricky because um, there's a lot of depth of field distortion. Mm -hmm. So the more I enlarge it, the worse that gets. And I, I try to draw just what's in the very center of the lens and then and then move it and keep moving it. But it's, you know, it's not. There might be a bit of distortion doing that too. There is, yeah. yeah. There's no way to really get it out of there. I, I think there are computer programs that mm -hmm. can do that now. But again, like this but, small specimen, Skull, you mentioned before, was on it was a jaw, a, jaw, a sorry, lower jaw, a lower jaw and had a pin, I mean, that would be better well, than itself like, to this. Oh yeah, yeah no. <laughs> and that was hard to draw because it was black, the color was just black, and so mm. when I shine, you know, a fiber optic light on it, the whole thing would just light up, and I, I couldn't even really see what I was looking at, and I have to look for, you know, where the gum line is, right. where the enamel line is, where, where the teeth are. Tiny, tiny, where the, you know, for in the pipe. So that I will work, I, I will labor over that for quite a few days. And again, as we talked earlier, uh, Bonnie, you're working on another project here with a, mm -hmm. a number of fossils that are actually, as fossils are, they're stone. Yes. It used to be uh, actual bone, but mm -hmm. uh, briefly, what, what kind, these are the kinds of things that actually wind up on your desk? Yes, um, this is a whale. and. This is the head of, of actually two different whales, the same species, but uh, two different individuals. Because uh, the one that I have that I'm trying to reconstruct is all kind of smashed. And, mm -hmm. You know, we can't, we can't, we, it's hard to tell what it looked like. Uh, and so I have the skull, the partial skull of another one of the same species. And of course, it's still hard to tell what it looks like, but <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll work with the two of them and come up with something um, that looks right, that is publishable. And right now there's segments of the bone. You've got like a piece of the skull back here. And yeah. A little bit of the jaw there. Yeah. This is part of the jaw. You know, with the, you can see where the teeth start here. Mm. I, I mean, and that thing is heavy. Sometimes I, I have one in each hand and, and I'm trying to work the computer and I have my little props where I can have things balanced and you know but and then this is the you know long extension of the snout I mean this is where you, the upper. these are teeth yeah this is the upper jaw mm. there's you can see one of the teeth here and some holes where the teeth were where the roots were it's it's just quite fascinating but what do you suppose the overall length was that yeah. well the head must have been four or five feet long. Uh, well, I don't know about that long, but it's about three and a half, four. Three and a half, four feet yeah. maybe. Wow. It was a big, big whale. And you mentioned a second ago the worst sound to hear in a museum is what? That crash, <laughs> <laughs> like somebody dropped something. A bone. A yeah, a because yeah. if you drop something like that, it's just going to shatter, and you know, then you have to start picking up the pieces mm -hmm. and. Get all the glue, and <laughs> usually you can't find all of them. One of, one thing that happened to me when I first started working here, I was working on a tiny, tiny little fish bone. It was so delicate. I was making a drawing, and under the microscope, and this little bone, which was part of the larger one that I was drawing, uh, just happened to. I just touched it with a brush, and it just kind of flipped away. And that was the whole point of the, I mean, that's what really what we were talking about. 
and we never did find it. The curator and I looked and looked and looked. You know, you'll vacuum the floor and go through all the dirt and oh go gosh. down because you're afraid to move to walk. You it's know, worse than contact lines. Well, and we never found it. So he said, "Well, it's a good thing we have the drawing now." <laughs> you know, you're fired. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. I didn't know, but it was an accident, and it happens to, you know. Really. It just. Oh. It happens. I'm hazard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I guess in a moment here we'll start looking at something on the computer. That mm -hmm. We have a really interesting uh, specimen you showed me just a minute ago. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I'll pull that up. Uh, this is an interesting project that um, was published not so long ago. Um, the fossil that was actually found in the lower left here, this reddish material, uh, it has within it uh, the bones of a snake, a large snake. It has some dinosaur eggs. And then it has an egg uh, with that I think is, must be cracked open because there's a baby dinosaur in there. You can't really see it, but that's what those little bones are. Um, this is a reconstruction, this here at the top. Uh, it's like a sculpture that an artist made of this scene as close as we can interpret it. And there's the baby dinosaur, and there are some eggs, and there's the snake getting ready to have a meal. And then part of my job was to illustrate what's going on here, diagrammatically. Um, and so here we see the snake and how it's coiled. And these are all the little backbone. You see some of them are missing, the vertebrae. These are where the eggs were. There was a fragment of an egg right here. And here's the baby dinosaur. And these are the bones that we have of the dinosaur. That's exactly what we have. And other ones are missing. This is the skull of the snake. You know, it kind of curves around like that. Uh, you can see the little teeth here. Not so little, I guess, if you're a baby dinosaur. But <laughs> so this was quite a project, actually. It took a lot of work to get it just right. Even these eggs have the texture um, of a dinosaur egg. So I went online and found a dinosaur egg, <laughs> picture of one, and copied it and got the texture and made, you know, so that actually, that's <coughs> actually what the egg would look like. A lot of little tricks like that that we can do. So that's what that project was all about. That was quite a lot of fun.